Hi everyone, in this video I will be experimenting with a few selfie drones and showing a video log of how to make a micro follow me drone. In this shot I have the beautiful Wingsland S6 Pocket selfie drone in my palm. It has these nice brushless models with folding props. It also has the 4K HD cam, but the mobile software for controlling it is limited to GPS functions. The optical flow sensor for auto hovering indoors is not possible because the app does not support its functions yet. Now there are two other selfie drones similar in size but with a big difference in their price. At 43 USD, this Asian 50 selfie drone has altitude hold with real-time Wi-Fi video. The chip barometer does a pretty good job at holding the altitude, but the Wi-Fi control and video works well up to 20 meters only. With no GPS or optical flow that auto hovers the drone, luckily the app has a gyro control option that allows you to tilt your phone to keep the drone hovering in one position. It's really easy to take a selfie 720p video using this method. In comparison, this Dobby drone is more expensive but it has all the bells and whistles. It has a 4K HD cam, it can do a GPS follow me. It has a working optical flow sensor that works well with the GPS auto positioning and altitude hold. And to impress your friends, it also has a land on palm feature which executes landing when the GPS coordinates of your smart device matches that of the drone. Now for this project, I chose the Hermit 145mm frame here because it has sufficient room to put in lots of components. And also it is the lightest 145 size frames out there. For this frame, it comes in as light as about 25.5 grams. I have lightened all the electronics that I'm going to use here. So I have the the case Mobius camera and let's take a look at the weight. With the SD card it comes in at about 17.9 grams. Part of the weight savings uh, is because of the battery that's removed. And I also have the 5.8 gigahertz FPV transmitter. As usual I get rid of the SMA connector. Now let's take a look at the Lighten transmitter here. 7.3 grams. Next I have the GPS and again it's on the case and have a 3D printer enclosure to allow mounting. And this one is about 7.1 grams. The original GPS with its stock case uh, comes in at about 9 grams, so just a little bit of weight saving there. And I also have the telemetry unit here. This is 915 megahertz. This unit talks to another one like this, which is connected to your Android phone. If you look at the original one, it looks something like this, with this big chunky antenna. And this one here, I've removed the SMA connectors. So 6 grams of savings there. For this type of um, antenna, if you remove the plastic tube, you're going to lose the dielectric properties. So the center frequency will be shifted from 915 MHz to the right, which means that it becomes more tuned for a higher frequency. To shift it back to its intended frequency, 915 you need to have a longer signal element wire. So what I've done is I desoldered the conduit here and then I stripped down the braided wires to expose more of the signal element. Now let's do a comparison. The original one comes in at about 13.1 grams and the lighten unit is now 4.9 grams. Alright, now let's take a look at how we are going to power up this Mobius camera and the VTX and also hook up the wires which are required for them to work together. The VTX has this um, connection here and basically it's able to take 2S input 8.4 volts from the flight pack as it has a step down voltage regulator inside. 
As for the Mobius, it feeds on 4.2 volts, so there's no way we could use the flight pack to power it directly. And also we can't use the 5 volts from the receiver to power it because 5 volts is still higher than 4.2 volts. Luckily we could tap power from this VTX. I noticed that on the module itself here, this is VCC. The voltage here is actually 4 volts. So we could use this output to power the Mobius camera. Also, we don't need to have all these wires here. I just need the power leads because I could directly hook up the video out from the Mobius camera to the video in here. This one, second from the right. So here you can see I've already soldered the magnet wires. This is the 4 volts output to the Mobius camera. This one is the video out to the Mobius camera. And this one here is ground, which is the black wire connection for both. You could use one of this, but to save weight, I decided not to use it. This is basically the leg of a resistor and I could plug this in to the hole here which is the second one from the right this one here this micro USB port actually has a switching mechanism to turn on the video out and it only does so when this port here the second one from the left is shorted with ground first port here which is ground Okay, I finally put the jumper into the two ports there to activate the video out and everything is soldered properly and the wires tidy up. So now it's time for a test. Oops, there's no image. Oh yeah, I forgot to turn on the Mobius camera. There you go. Alright, in this shot you can see I have the four ESCs installed. At this stage I have the fright controller inside, but it's not permanent yet as I haven't soldered the power leads for the battery. And the ESCs are pretty much installed on top of each arm to allow the props to cool them. And basically the heat string does a good job of holding the ESC as you can see here and because the carbon frame is conductive it's a good idea to just take on a piece of black tape on the surface before you mount your ESC here is the APM Nano Fret Controller which I'm using it was mounted early in the drone just now because I need to measure how long this ESC is wire need to be to reach out to the connector ports here also I have found this two cell WiPo pack connector. This will be going onto the power cables for the drone and it will allow me to hook up my self-assembled two cell WiPo packs here which only has the charge tab. Okay let's take a close-up view of the fright controller itself. I'm gonna bring it to the camera, closer to the camera so that you can see it. Basically over here you have the solder tabs for you to make a close connection if you want to run this fret controller for one cell setup or two cell setup if you prefer and you gotta solder these tabs I'll be running two cell so I have to solder these two tabs together also I noticed that this rail here is the positive and it goes to the VCC connection here which is where I will solder the red wire and this rail here is the ground and basically it has continuity to this tab here which is where I need to solder the black wire 
So the red and black will be the power leads to power the drone. I'm going to splice the wire which powers the, the VTX and the Mobius as well as the flight controller which basically is a power distribution board for the four ESCs, the GPS as well as the telemetry radio which we will be using for this project. Alright, I have the VCC and the ground soldered up but when I hook up light port I realize that the only power is the four ESCs via the distribution rails and there's no power to the APM board. Then I realized that there's a pair of pads here called JB which I think it stands for Joint Bridge. So I soldered this and hopefully I can get the step down from 8.4 volts to 5 volts to power the APM. Let's see whether joining the bridge helps. I'm gonna power up. Okay, we have the lights from the ESCs. And yes, there's light from the APM as well. It's working. As I suspected, the bridge allows um, the step down from 8.4 volts to power up the APM. We also see light from the ETSM2 receiver in there. So everything is working according to plan. In this shot, you can see that we have the telemetry unit here, which is already connected to the radio port on the APM Mini. I've cut down the wires, keep it short, and the plan is to mount it here such that the antenna is radiating properly. The next step is to install the Mini GPS. Here is the Mini GPS with its case removed. So that gives about 3.3 grams of savings. And I also cut away the original plugs and replace them with those that are suitable for the APM. When you purchase the APM Nano, it comes with a bag of plugs here. And you will find the suitable connection, which looks like this. This is really printed amount to install the GPS on top here. Alright, I've mounted the GPS and it's looking good when I hook up the battery. You can see the GPS power on and the 4 ESC is lit up. Also I could feel the VTS getting hot which is good. And the Mobius camera is power on as well. And the APM Nano is power on, you can see the lights inside. And I'm going to try to connect wirelessly using telemetry to see if it works. Yeah, it's working. Now let's see how heavy this cord is with the 2 cell 600 mAh LiPo pack. 134 grams. Alright, here's a size comparison of my DIY selfie drone or follow me drone. And on its left is the Asian 50 pocket selfie drone. And on its right is the 120mm Scorpion LKTR mini drone. It has a good size. It's a Hermit 145 frame. It's almost the same size like the Asian 50 pocket drone and it has slightly longer props. Well, for a follow me drone, I don't need such a powerful transmitter, so I'm using my 3D printed Retro Gamer style controller, which is made from a transmitter board from this E-Fleet MLP6DSM, which is a low power transmitter. However, I have enhanced it by putting in a booster, so it's now 2 watts can see the blue LED light which is the indicator for the 2 watt booster and a good thing is I do have the 3 position switch for the 3 flight modes so I can start off with stabilize and followed by altitude hold and then the lighter so it's pretty